विद्यापति महापुरुष इज गंभीर टू हियर हिज सॉन्ग्स विद्यापति चंडीदास और गीत गोविंद ही लाइक सो मच अद्वैताचार्य प्रभु मेक मी इन मिथिला टू वॉज अ राज कवि ऑफ मिथिला किंग वॉट ही वॉज रॉयल पोएट वेन अद्वैताचार्य प्रभु ब्रजमंडल ही वेन टू मिथिला जनकपुरी ही सा दैट इन ए शेड ऑफ कदम बेनियन ट्री वेरी वेरी ब्यूटिफुल बट ओल्ड एनी पर्सन इज लाउन डाउन एंड सिंगिंग विथ टीयर्स तातल सैकत भारी बिंदु सम सुतमी तरमी समाजी वीपिंग वेरी डीप मीनिंग हाउ रेचड ऑन फाइव ऑन मी आई फॉर वेट एन कृष्ण माई एटर्नल मास्टर एंड सिंकिंग इन वर्ल्डी डिजायर्स what wife children and all this what they will do oh prabhu you should be merciful to me like this advita chat thought that who is mahapurush and then he sat down and then he asked then he was weeping a bitter day whole life i have डन किंग सेवा राज्य कवि बट नाउ आई एम रियलाइजिंग वट बोगस थिंग्स आई है कृष्ण पॉइम सो मेनी वेरी वेरी विरहात्मक दैट इज वाई चैतन्य महाप्रभु लाइट ऑल्सो क्यों चंडी दास Oh, high class कवि One day tomorrow we can produce any कीर्तन You know चंडी दास केवा सुनाइल कृष्ण नाम यू शुड सी एंड I'm not afraid. 
Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurakti Gurave Gautra Chandraya Radhikaya Itadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tadabhaktaya Yang Prabhrajantam Anupetam Apeta Krityam Dvaipāyano viraha kātar yājuhāva putre titan mayataya tarvo bhene dhoni tam sarva bhūtaridayam munimāna tarsni tavai vāsni tavai vāsni najivāmi tayābhina iti pikyāya rādhe tam nai māma charna First of all, my millions of dandak pranam in the lotus feet of my spiritual master, Paramaradha, Tam Om Vishnupas is my bhakti prakyan Kesava Swami Maharaj. And same millions of dandak pranam in the lotus feet of my Shiksha Guru, Nittalila Pravishtong Vishnupas is my bhakti, Vedan Swami Maharaj. Today in morning, for Govardhan Puja, Go Puja, Vaishnava Puja, oh, very wonderful. More than 750 tons of 800. 800. I pray Govardhan, those who whole night prepare, preparing all these things, so many paraphernalia, and those who help them, those who brought all these things to make, and those who took all in their head and went there, and those who saw how offering how beautiful Abhishek and then Arati, Bho, Gopuja and everything. Those who have seen, really they are very lucky. The mercy of Govardhan Prabhu, Govardhan Giriraj, shortly they have, they will receive. And those who are thinking, this is bogus thing. <laughs> but we should speak so much all this Harikatha. No need of going to uh, Govardhan Puja. Or where your Guru is going, all Vaishnava is going. Hmm? What we told there? Paramadamadana leela kandare kandare te rachayati navajunu dvanda masme namanda. Itikil nakal nartak lagna kasta dhayur me nije nikata nivasam dehi gubar. Oh, Gubardhan Giraj is witness for all the hidden sweet pastimes kunja leela. Oh, Giraj Gubardhan, you should inspire all these leela. Yatraiva Krishna Vishubhanu Putra Dhanam Grihitam Kalahan Vitehne Shutesh Prihar Jatra Mahatsa Atasri Govardhano Mehi Kishatam O Giraj Govardhan Where in Govardhan? In Dhan Ghati You are Gopis are and you so best dialogues and they are quarreling Prem Kalaha Love, fire. Hmm? Gopis are telling, who are you to take taxes here? Hmm? Is it your father's property? Oh, Krishna told me, yes, this is my wife's property. Who is your wife? Oh, Brinda. Oh, they called Brinda and told, oh, Brinde, you are wife of this black person? <laughs> And then what? She told, never, never. He thinks that I am 
husband of all Braj Gopi. But who will marry to this cheater person and black person? And Krishna, Gopi told, have you planted any plant here? Even? We think that by your cows, hmm, or destroying all the creepers here, grasses here, flowers here. Hmm, so how you became hmm, like this? And to take that, so kalhang bitene, suta sutesh priha jatra mahatta tahasri govardhano me jishatam avishtam. Oh, Govardhan Giriraj, oh, fearful night I desire. What is your desire? Oh, very high, very high. What even tell? Oh, Radha Darshan. Oh, Radha Darshan. Very, very rare. And say, yes. Oh. So be yeah? it. So be it. So be it. Tathastu. Tathastu, tathastu. That. Chataiva Ganga Manu Navi Radha Arojiya Madde. Oh Krishna, uh, being a boatman, oh come on, now it is very dark going. Come on on my boat, I will very soon. And then, when all sat there, oh my boat is very old. And water is coming. Oh, so give up your all jars, water jars. They give up. <coughs> so Krishna was telling so many things and began to and then Srimati Radhika automatically catch hold of him what Krishna wanted. So oh Giraj, you are witness, I witness. So please inspire us in that past times. How beautiful Bhavartan. Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati. Hints of you to go and tell all these poetries. One I don't remember. Of one of Rupa Goswami, one of Ra Go Das Goswami, and one of Vishwanath This is the mantra of Govardhan. So don't think these are not important. Only Shari Katha that. Then, yesterday, we heard about No Jokendra last, and he finished Karbhajan Rishi in the end. After, in Kali Yuga, Mahaprabhu is versatile deity. I buy Sankirtan, or oh, his versatile is Sankirtan Mahajagya. And then Narat went to other planets. After that, Brahma with Shankar, Indra, Angira, and other Vidyadhar, Gandharva, and all, they came to Dwarka to take darshan of Krishna. And they began to pray Krishna. And when they prayed, then they told, Brahma told, O Supreme Lord, we prayed that take the burden of earth. So in childhood, you killed Agasur, Bakasur, Putana, Keshi, and so many. And in Mathura, Charun, Mosti, Kansa. And after that in Dwarka, Jarasandha, Kaljavan, Pandrik, Vasudev, and so many. And after that in Mahabharata, you can become charioter. Hmm? Arjun and Bhim were fighting and killing. But really, you, main cause. Why? You used to take their all energy and strongness and they become what? Like zero. And Arjun came Oh, he became Nimitta Karadamalli. But really Krishna, in this way, 
so many akshawani army of these wicked kings were finished hmm? or then prabhu now we request that our whole desire is fulfilled and you came to test braj rasha you also have tested that that to hear kaljugi manushya kaljug human human persons they will very easily by hearing by telling very easily they will cross the unlimited pain of birth and life and receive your hari prayer so now you be request requesting if you like we cannot order if you like then your all desire all our desire have been fulfilled now you can go to your param dham prajamandal oh krishn told oh i was thinking like so now my all desires have been finished and burden of earth has been removed so i was thinking and in the meantime you have come but i want to tell you everything has been done but not everything something is remaining and that is that my jodu bans very desperate protected by me any demi gods indra and others can defeat them so i if i will go this defer very desperate jodubansi will be a burden of this whole world oh now brahma shap has come very soon huh? what was brahma shap once durbasha nara gautam vashishta or so many high class of rishis and muni they went to take darshan of krishna and after darshan very near or anywhere they were sitting and they were discussing the glories of krishna in the meantime oh all jadubansi boys young persons they thought what they rishi are they don't know anything Hmm? they decorated sham one of the son of krishna very beautiful more than ladies and decorating like a lady and they put some cloths on the stomach uh, stomach of that sham and after that one pava you know on feet bread is given they gave and they took it to orishi maharshi samha samhas well they depressed while they went there and told oh orishi maharshi you are you know bhut bhavishyat vartaman you know present past and future so we are requesting that this lady is very shy very shy but she wants to know that she is pregnant so a boy or daughter will come from her first they neglected rishis oh what this boy is that kid but again and again they told like this then they became very angry and told no but son no daughter a musal will come high upside wood and lower side some iron oh this musal will come and it will destroy your whole dynasty 
Oh, we can very worry. At once Harani, they opened and they, they saw, oh, really, a musal is there. Then they took that musal. They did not went to Krishna, they went to Krishna. So, oh, Maharaj, oh, we are very worried that we went to Rishis and they became angry and they had told like this. Oh, you have done very wrong thing. And then he took that musal. Wooden part was burnt in fire into ashes. And iron, they began to grind. Then it became like dust, but some was not crushed. Then he took all the ashes of wood and all the iron dust and that remaining part of iron and he fell in the ocean. At once ocean does not keep anything. If you fell anything, it will return back. If you go there, Oh, he will take your life and your body he may turn no power. <laughs> so all the dust of that iron, they came again in the soul. And they become erka grass, very soft, very big, about 15 feet high or more, and very soft. His lips very soft. And that remaining part of iron was a, a fish showed out. And after some time, a boat, uh, fisherman caught that fish. And he saw, when he was going to cook, he saw that a very sharp iron part is there. He took it and put on his barn arrow on the end of barrel. Now, now by this uh, sharp curse of riches, now was appearing. Krishna told all Jagavansi, we should not stay here more. You see that from the sky rain of blood is coming. So many unauspicious things are going on. Jackals and cow, crows and elephants are weeping. So, we should stay a moment here. At once we should go to Prabhas, and there Prabhas is very holy place. There we will make sacrifices, and we will worship Brahmins, and we will satisfy that Brahmas. By that, our cause may be reduced, otherwise not. So, we must go there. He was telling, and in the meantime, Uddhav came. O oh, Prabhu, I was searching you. You are sitting here. What I am seeing? So many unauspicious things. O oh, Brahma Shap is on our head. I know that you are Supreme Lord. You can stop that course. You can make a remedy for that. But I am seeing that you are supporting the Brahmans. Supporting, okay? Supporting. In your opinion, oh, the Brahma shop is okay. But by this, 
symptoms i i know that now you want to give up this world and want to go to param brahma pad kolo vrindavan return so please i cannot remain without you from why do we have played together sometimes you have taken my advice you are so prim lord but i am bishai but even you took my advice i am now uh, mukt ho raha hu even right now please prabhu i want to come with you don't give up me then krishna told i want that you should be in this world after me kalji will come and so many bad things will come after me you will be the representative and by this sweet past times you can tell to others only you are qualified so please be here he told the how can i be here i am bewildered a man like me so bishai attached to all friends and others how i can be here then krishna told i am telling a story please hear and then he began to tell that you know maharaj jadu very white and very powerful king of jadu dynasty once he was going anywhere and he saw a man who was quite naked quite naked and he was so happy he had nothing with him empty handed and very profoundly chit very happy mood he was traveling whole world nothing to do from others <coughs> then chatu maharaj did pranam to him oh prabhu i see that you are not ordinary person you know past present and future always so happy and traveling whole world naked quite not even a longoti why how then he became he left his moan bhav and by mercy he began to tell him what he began to tell him Chobis Guru, twenty-four Gurus. I have done twenty-four, twenty-four Gurus, and what they are? You can begin. You have not. You remember you, you. तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नम वंशाकुल पे मै हम लिशे And the lotus feet of my Paramahansa Guru Pad Padma, Om Vishnu Pad, Ashto Dhar Sada Sishti Madhukti Vedanta Sula Paman Goswami Maharaj, and Om Vishnu Pad, Puri Braja Kachar Jagarja, Ashto Dhar Sada Sishti Madhukti Vedanta Sula Narayan Goswami Maharaj. I pay my obeisances all Vishnu Bhavas and Vishnu Bhis who assembled here 
to listen some holy kata from Guru Dev Lotus leaves headed by Tridandi Sannasis. So, Srila Guru Dev has discussed about Uddhav Sangbad. So, prior to that, when discussion was going on between Uddhav and Krishna, Uddhav understood that Krishna will give up this material world and go his eternal abode, Galavadham. Uddhav told, O oh Prabhu, what you are advising me to give up all relatives and friends. So, what you are telling, this is not proper for me because I am Vishayi. I am thinking all, all these things. So what sannasi you are telling to give up? <coughs> so how I can easily get rid of this thing? Moreover, in this world, all are slept by your material energy, I mean illusory maya. Very hard to get rid of this maya. But you have told, e yathamang prapadante maya metam tarantite. So I don't care for your maya. I am not fearing for your maya, I am fearing for your separation. How I will be here without you? I, you are my soulmate, you are my life and soul. Without you, my life in vain. So what shall I do? Then Uddhav told, Tayopa bhukta sakgandha basa What is your remnant cloth, sandal paste, and garland and your cloth I am using. Using all these things, I can get I can get it very easily. Because I am your das, but I am not fearing for your Maya, fearing for your separation. So please tell me how I will be happy can get rid of all these things which you are telling. Then Krishna told, listen, in our dynasty there is a very influential king named Yodhu. Once he was traveling, then he saw one avadhut and he is very happy and always keeping silence mood of keeping silence. Seeing him, Jadu Maharaj did pronoun to him because in ancient time they used to honor the Brahmin always. So told, O oh Prabhu, it seems that you are very happy because face is the indication of mind. Your face is very happy. So what kind of pleasure you have in your heart that you are very happy? You are very qualified to do any karma, but not doing any karma. What is the cause that you became very happy? Then seeing his polite mood, Abhadut means Dattatriyaji has broken his silence and being costless merciful, told to him, Oh, so listen carefully. In my life, I met so many persons, so many living entities. From them, I learned so many things. I met 24 gurus, siksha gurus. From them, what I learned, I am telling you, so you can listen carefully. I have learned from Mother Earth, Prithvi Devi, and Agni, Akas, Bayu, Moon, Sun, Pigeon, so many things, 24. The first one, Mother Earth. In this Earth, so many persons doing so many nonsense things, but he is so much tolerant, always forgive mode. Look, we are not doing any worship of Mother God. We are sitting here, we are walking on top of that, on the earth surface and we are digging hole, we are passing stool, passing urine and in this modern Kali, so many they are doing so many nuclear tests, so many things they are doing, but it never protest, always come and quite tolerate everything. So from Mother Earth, I learned how to tolerate and the quality of forgiveness. Listen, the trees, and mountain, they came from earth. If you see trees, they never alive for their own. They everything, their root, their bark, their wood, their leaf, their flower and 
proves everything for others. So if someone went to do bhajan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told for whole world, Trinadopi suni chena, tararopi sahisnuna, amanina manadena, kirtaniya sadahari. When Sarup Damodar Prabhu and Raya Ramananda Prabhu was discussing with Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu told, Kirupe loile nam premu pajoy, tahar sarup lokkhan suna ram rai. Mahaprabhu is telling, O sarup ram, sarup ramananda, sarup damodar ramananda, by which process someone will accept harinam, how they attain prem, I am telling you. Then Mahaprabhu told, Trinadopi suni chena tarodopi sahisruna. We have to be very humble, then a piece of blood of a grass. And if you walk on that grass, they will not protest you. And Tarodopi Sahisruna have to be more tolerant than a tree. If there is full of fruits, if you hit the tree by a stick or by a stone, they will protest you. You are giving, giving pain, they are giving you very nice, tasty, and not, by which you can nourish your life, they are giving fruit. So Vaishnav have to be like this and not hankering for his own prestige have to give prestige to others. So here, Yadu Maharaj, Avadhan is telling to Yadu Maharaj, the trees, they are living for others, not for them. And mountain also. So from Prithivi Devi, from Mother Earth, I learned how to give forgiveness. After that he told, my second Guru is Prithivi? Wind. By you. Wind, air is two types. One is live air, another external air. The first one, live air, living inside, is not desiring any, anything, only what he need, by that we can eat by his desire. If there is no live air, we could not eat, could not alive. And so Krishna has told in Gita also, a yukta hara viharascha. What is needed if you use that, then will be yogi, then will not affect by other mood of natures. So, this life here, instructing us, don't be attached, and what is needed, you can use that only. And outside air, you have to go everywhere. You can see air is here now, going there, traveling here and there. Although they are traveling, they want or not, they have to take so many things like good fragrance or foul smell, you want or not. But the fragrance is the quality of earth, but still air have to taken. And from here is going, then give up here, not taking other place. He always completely detached. Same way, who is sadhak, they have to detach from this material world. Be, have, if needed, you have to go so many places, but don't attach there. Like, Air. So I have learned all this, did how to be detached, I learned this from air. After that he told, my third guru is Akash. Na Jol. Huh. Bayu Akash. Oh. The third guru is Sky. The sky also always detached, everywhere. Inside any pot, outside, inside our body every year, but always detached, not attached any hair. So from Akas I have learned how to be nearly, how to be detached. After he told my fourth good is water. Even uh, Akas, it seems that rain is coming and clouds are covering the sky, sky. but really not so. Akas is always normal. Always clean and clear. Those clouds and so many rain and everything is there. But he is oh, not quite disturbed. Nearby. So a sadhu should be like that. Then he told my fourth guru is water. Water always transparent and pure. And it's very smooth and sweet taste. So sadhu must be always pure and very transparent means his external and internal behavior will be same. That means be simple-hearted without any hypocrite. We are telling one thing and behind thinking another thing, not like this. And always 
be all use sweet word for others. If someone come, if you could not treat them nicely or could not welcome nicely, at least you can use your sweet words. What harm if you use sweet words? So sadhak must be always use sweet words and pure and transparent. Externally and internally be same. So also about wind, always pure. Sometimes it blows from one part to another part. No. Sugandha, good fragrance, Sugandha. foul smell, bad smell and so many things. And sometimes goes through a very far, very good forest smelling flowers and But she, Vayu is always Dictus, neutral. Nothing to do. And in the same way, a sky is always nirmal. So a sadhu should be like that. Good man, bad man, so many things coming, meeting him, but he will be always nirmal. Nothing to do with others. After that, he told, my another guru is fire. From fire, I have learned that fire eating everything. If you put anything in fire, any good thing or bad thing, you take everything, but not be contaminated. So sadhu, fire digests everything. So sadhu must be like fire. What is needed he can do, but must be always pure. He should not keep inside anything him. If you keep anything inside you, then you will contaminate it. If you digest, then no problem. You are eating, but could not digest, then your stomach problem, this and that. But fire digesting everything, and you not taking any good or bad qual quality of others. So sadhu can mix others, but they should not take any good or bad qualities of material world, then their sadhana will be hampered. So this way I have learned so many things from so many gurus. There are 24 gurus, so we have heard from others and from Guru Lotus Leaf. Hare Krishna. Rabi, Shan, and then Kapo, then Ajiga. Om Gyanati Marandhasya Gyanandana Sulakaya Chakshur Nulatam Dena Tasvay Sri Gurave Nama First of all, I have for my Sastang Dandavat Puspanjali My heart like flowers thousands of times with the lotus feet of Asmadiya Parmaradha Tum Guru Pada Padma Om Vishnu Pada Stotra Sita Sishimat Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj I have for my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Varga Sri Guru Parampara and I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So, Srila Gurudev ordered me to continue with the narration of uh, Dr. Treya, spoken by Dr. Treya, explaining how he is looking around the world and being inspired and learning so many lessons from his uh, Dristanta Gurus, the Gurus that teach by seeing them and by their examples. So, Dr. Treya, he explained, fire is my Guru. Why? Because fire is uh, changing at every moment. All the small particles in the fire are moving, moving, moving all the time, but you cannot see it. So, in the same way, all the shapes in the world around us they are be changing at every moment by the imperceptible movements of time and finally everything will be vanquished. So from fire I have learned about the imperceptible movement of time. We forget that life is going by very very quickly but every year when we come here 
to have the darshan of Srila Gurudev at Baja, we see everyone is a little bit more fat, a little bit more gray, and so on. So, time, but for ourselves, we tend not to notice how time is taking everything away, imperceptibly. Also, fire, fire is inside everything, but sometimes it's revealed, and sometimes not revealed, like a sadhu, a God-conscious person, enlightened person. Sometimes they reveal their uh, understanding and realization. At that time, they play the role of guru or teacher in this world. And sometimes, like uh, Dr. Treya, when he was silent, his qualities all hidden inside. So, Dr. Treya, he learned this from fire. Now we're coming to... Yes, sun. Sun? Moon. 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 The moon. Dr. Treya Maharaj, he said, from the moon, I have learned about the nature of the soul. When we look at the moon, one day it's a new moon, very thin. Then it becomes wider, wider, becomes half moon. Gradually, over 16 days, it becomes a full moon. So the moon is waxing and the moon is waning. It seems to be growing and disappearing. But actually, the moon is always the same. This is only our vision. So in the same way, every Atma, every soul is the same and transcendental. But by our material understanding, we think this person is growing and uh, diminishing again. So I have learned about the nature of the soul from the moon. Then Dr. Treya said, the sun is also my guru. Why? Because the sun is like a sadhu. The sun is in the sky and from the heat of the sun it evaporates water from oceans and lakes and accepts that and then later sends it back in the form of rain so a sadhu how is a sadhu? like Srila Gurudev many many devotees come many people give so many pranami donations but Gurudev he has nothing for himself only at the appropriate time like the sun he accepts this and then gives everything back how? by making very wonderful mandir in Govardhan, in Navadip Dham, very soon in Jagannath Puri Dham, and so on. So because the sun never ex accepts anything for itself, but takes from everywhere and gives back at the appropriate time. So Dr. Treya said, I have learned this quality of the sadhu from the sun. Kapoor. Pigeon. Pigeon. Then, he said, my next guru is the pigeon. He n narrated a story. Once there was a male pigeon, and moving here and there, as destiny would have it, he met with a female pigeon. And they became very much in love with each other. They like to see each other's smiling faces, and they have so many things in common, so they entered into a relationship. And whatever desires the female pigeon had, the male pigeon, even though it was, he had to undergo so many difficulties. He was happy to fulfill all of those desires. And before long, some eggs were born, <laughs> and they gradually hatched, and some uh, baby pigeons, some chicks were born, and the two of them, they're very happy and absorbed in their life together with their chicks. So one day, both of them, they went out to collect food for their chicks, but a hunter came. And the hunter came and snared their chicks in a net. So when the female bird saw this, without thinking, without considering the circumstances, at once she flew directly there, again into the trap of the hunter. And the male bird, he was lamenting. How can I live without my chicks? How can I live without my wife? And he was lamenting, and as he was lamenting, the hunter also caught him. So Dr. Treya, he said, by watching this, I have learned a very good lesson. The lesson is, when a living entity takes birth as a human being, after 8,400,000 species of life, many, many births, but when that soul takes birth in the human body, at this moment, the doors of liberation from the cycle of birth and death, they are wide open. He can walk out. But, if that person is bewildered by excessive affection for family members, then what will happen? His opportunity to escape comes, but he missed it completely. Hmm? Just like 
there's one story. Once there was a, a blind man, and he was going begging door to door. Radhe Radhe, give me a donation, give me a donation. And he would accept a donation and then continue walking. So one day he came to a door and there was no answer, so he went inside. Hmm? He was saying, give me a donation. Hmm? But no one would answer. So he turned around to walk out, but he walked into a wall. So he put his hand on the wall. He was saying, where's the door? Where's the door? He was blind. He did not know. He'd walked, walked into a stadium, a very big building, big round building. And keeping his hand on the wall, he was walking and thinking, I'll come to the door any minute now. Hmm? And walking and walking, touching the side of the wall. And he was going for a very, very long time, all the way around the stadium. And then just when he came to the door, the way out, as he got there, he scratched his head, where's that door? And he'd been walking for a long time and put his hand back on the wall the other side. Huh? And around he went again. So, yes, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not actually. Hmm? Because, just like the soul, he's wandering round and round through millions of lifetimes, so many births. And then, what happens? He takes birth in the human form. Now he came to the door. If he will utilize his independence properly, he will come out of the endless chain of birth and death. But what happens? Some itching and scratching, and that opportunity is missed, and again the soul moves around. And so, uh, here, Dr. Treya is saying that by excessive attachment for one's family members and society... Excessive what? Or affection. Any little affection even, it will increase more and more. Mm -hmm. So don't attach at all. <laughs> so, and you should know, as you are telling, life is very, human life very, very rare. And he was moving in the stadium. When door came, he began to <laughs> So, this story is not to tell others, but also to apply on us. As he is telling, as Dattrate Prabhu, I am following you back. I have no wife, no children, no relatives, nothing. And so I am very happy. <laughs> Ajagara. Thank you. <laughs> Don't be CPN and oh, call is here. Time that is day. Oh, what dancing on the head. Huh? And at any time he will come and he will follow you. So be always careful. <coughs> Don't lose a moment to be attached in these worldly things. Not anyone. Whole attachment should be in the lotus feet of Guru and Krishna. If you are attaching to Gurudev, Gurudev, Kindly take that achievement and will give in the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Yeah. Guru Vail Gauda Chandraya Radhikaya Tadale Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tadavakta Namo Namaha. So first of all, I offer my obeisances to Sri Gurudev, present sannyasis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavas. So continuing the instru invaluable instructions of Sri Dattatraya to Maharaj Yadu. So the next guru, he said, I have a guru, his name is Ajagra. No? Python. Python never moves anywhere, only he stays in one place and all food enters his mouth. Just like Sri Prahlad Maharaj, on his travels afterwards, he met one yogi who was very fat so, and naked, lying on the dust. Then Prahlad Maharaj was astonished, Maharaj, you seem to do no activity, no work whatsoever, but you are very fat. And he said, yes, I follow the philosophy of the python. 
I know that happiness and distress are predestined according to our previous activities. They were just like no one ever makes a plan how I can suffer today, how I can fall off a bridge, how I can break my leg. No one makes a plan how to suffer, but suffering comes automatically. In the same way, why I should endeavor very much for material happiness, because material happiness will also come by its own accord, according to my past activities. Therefore, I neither try to remove distress or to achieve happiness. I stay in one place and it comes automatically. Therefore, from that philosophy of non-movement, non-activity, non-endeavor, I learned that from the Python. Then the next guru, the five next five gurus deal with controlling our five senses of sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. So another guru is the ocean, because even though in the drought seasons, when the rivers are very small, the ocean neither becomes bigger, nor in the flood seasons... From other mm. python, we can learn whatever is coming easily, by that we should maintain our life. If one day, two days, three days, even not coming anything, oh, they should tolerate this, not be violent or anything. So we should be like that python. <coughs> in the ocean, in the dry season, he does not shrink and become diminished, nor in the rainy season does he become very swollen. There that sometimes the sadhu gets a lot and he is not disturbed, he does not become excessively materially enthusiastic, nor when there is a shortage does he become diminished. Just like Sri Gurudev, everyone always says, 50 years ago when he had nothing, he is the same as he is now. Therefore, even though the whole world may leave him tomorrow, he will be unchanged, not like us. So the next five gurus deal with the five senses. For example, one of the gurus is the moth. Because the moth, his weakness is, he cannot control his sense of sight. So what you learn from Sindhu? Ocean means we should not be disturbed if so much comes or so much goes. Ocean is always the same. Ocean never changes. Some small ocean is not disturbed. If so much coming, wealth and reputation and position and so many things. Oh, nothing to and if so much uh, suffering comes, all are abusing you, beating you even, like the dandy, you should tolerate. Hmm? Then you will be happy and peaceful. Then, So just like a materialistic man or woman, but Bhagavatam says a woman, when she is nicely dressed in sari and ornaments and makeup and lipstick, then a foolish man becomes very excited and he rushes towards her like a moth enters a flame. Then the moth gives up his existence. Therefore from the moth I learned, if one does not control one's sense of sight, then he will lose everything. Another guru is the foolish deer. The deer... Oh, the deer... Patanga, you have told? Patanga. Moth, uh, finished moth. Okay. And then <laughs> Madhukrita? Madhukrita. The, the bee. The bee's weakness is... Oh, I tell, I, I, I'm doing another one. <laughs> First is moth. Well, the bee, he runs moth. around all summer collecting... Good chance. And then... <laughs> O Madhyana Timirandasya Jnanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Vilitam Jena Tasmai Sri Vidameen. So, so many gurus can be seen within this world. If anyone is trying to go on the path of liberation from this material world, 
then they will have to also use their intelligence. And they will try to have to observe this material world as this Dattatreya Rishi was describing how so many aspects of this world gave him inspiration toward the path of liberation. How he should live within this world. How he should avoid certain in allurements and enticements so that this rare human form of life will not be lost. The opportunity will not be lost. So now he goes on to explain about the honeybee. He says, just as a honeybee takes nectar from all flowers, big and small, an intelligent human being should take the essence from all religious scriptures. And a saintly person should accept only enough food to keep his body and soul together. He should go from door to door accepting just a little bit of food from each family. Thus he should practice the occupation of the honeybee. So in India, they have a system called Madhu Kari. And this is the ancient system by which sages would maintain their existence. Those who were renunciates, those who were sannyasis, they would not acquire any kind of property, they would not be attached to any kind of possessions, and even for their very maintenance of their body, and for acquiring foodstuffs, they would simply live by going door to door and begging. Of course, in the modern day, in Kali Yuga, there are so many laws of the Western civilization and such, it is more difficult to do, but in Vedic times, all the householders, they would be trained that if any person comes to their door and is begging, oh, it is a great opportunity for them, here is a saintly person who is coming. <clears throat> they understand that this saintly person should be honored and served just as if he is Atiti Bhagavan. That means the Lord Himself, God Himself coming to my door. Now I have an opportunity to serve the personality of Godhead in the form of this guest. So the saintly persons would go from door to door. They would stay only a very short period of time. It was described that Sri Shukadeva Goswami was like this also. All the great sages, they would come to a householder's home. Only long enough, they would stay, just long enough for them to milk a cow. Why? Because very short time, they would accept a little bit of donation of milk from the cow to maintain their bodies. But what would they give in exchange? While they were there, in that place, they would distribute transcendental knowledge into the hearts of the householders. And by their very presence, by their very example, they would show detachment from this world. So, a saintly person should maintain his existence without attachment, without accumulating. Uh, just as the honeybee goes from flower to flower to flower and takes a little bit from here and there. So the saintly person should be like this. And also in relation to the Vedic Shastras, to the scriptures, transcendental knowledge, he should understand, just like the honeybee is taking the essence from a flower, uh, the pollen from the flower. So similarly, the saintly person, he should understand the real meaning, the true meaning and deep meaning of all Shastras. He should not be, become captivated by some of the uh, pushpavachya, the flowery words of the Vedas, which are sometimes there to encourage less intelligent persons to perform Vedic ritualistic activities for elevation to heavenly planets and such in next lifetime for higher states of material enjoyment, but rather he should take the essence of all Shastras, which is pure devotion, pure bhakti to the lotus feet of Bhagavan. Then elephant. Elephant. <laughs> so, then the next guru is the elephant. <laughs> so, a saintly, a saintly person should never touch a young girl. In fact, he should not even let his foot touch a wooden doll in the shape of a, of a woman. By bodily contact with a woman, he will surely be captured by illusion, just as the elephant is captured by the she-elephant due to his desire to touch her body. You know how? Yes. Oh. Tell them. Yeah. So, we should be very careful, very careful. 
So, vice versa, not for only women. Yeah. In India, they have so many elephants, and there is a method for capturing a male elephant. In forest. In the forest, in the jungle. Uh, the male elephant is roaming here and there in the jungle. Very, very difficult to capture him. But, because the male elephant is very much attached to the female elephant, the male elephant becomes attached to the female elephant by dint of the desire to touch her. So, what they do is they take a female elephant who has already been captured, already trained, and what they do is they train her to go in behind a pit that they dig in the earth, a very big, dark, deep hole, and covered, with and covered with grass so that it cannot be seen. So the female elephant is going in front of the male elephant. Male elephant sees her and is attracted and wants to touch her. So what happens is the female elephant is trained to lead the male elephant and she goes just around this hole. But what happens to the male elephant, he doesn't see because it's covered by grass and he falls down into the hole. And once he is down in the hole, now what do they do? They don't feed him. They don't give him any food. For many, many days, gradually, gradually, the male elephant becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. He has no strength left, practically. And now they use the, sh the female elephant to pull the male elephant out of the hole, and now he's completely captured. Uh, yes. They get an iron chain oh. to see elephant, and she goes. <laughs> And then she ties the chain around his neck <laughs> and pulls him out of the hole. So, yo, <laughs> this is the wedding ring given by the female elephant. <laughs> Don't laugh, but take the essence of this story. Don't be male elephant. They raise from baby. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. They gather and they made a wicked plan to take all the 
was great for he was going to concentrate with under and your shoulders and baby he did play and the puppies on the cows and father arm and everyone for first in transcendental business he is trying to